should you start dating as soon as you can or should you wait for your ex to come back after they've dumped you now i think most people's instinct is to get back out there as soon as they possibly can but for for most people this isn't the right thing to do because the intentions are all wrong so then the other thing they will do is go back to waiting for their ex to reach out and reconcile but maybe that is also not the correct strategy or maybe it is maybe it isn't but that's what i'm going to discuss today and try to get you pointed in the right direction for the strategy that will work best for you and your situation but before i do that Welcome back to The Love Fix. It's Nick, as always, doing my best to get you through your breakups as easily and as healthily as possible. There are two links I would like you to check out in the description. The first link is to my one-to-one coaching services. If you need my help with your breakup situation and whatever emotional turmoil you're going through right now, book it with the link and I'll help you get through it. If that is not enough, come and join my Facebook group where there is over 5,000 people in there now, guys, all helping each other out and making friends. And hey, some people have even gone on dates with each other after they've recovered. So it's actually become quite a successful group now. And I'd be really excited if you come and joined in. With all that said, let's get straight into it. I think a lot of people genuinely get paralyzed between should I wait wait for my ex or should I start dating someone else? And it's an either or situation in most people's heads. But I want to encourage you to maybe choose a third option if those first two options are not working for you. Maybe you should be sitting down and asking yourself, hey, am I emotionally available to start dating someone? Am I emotionally available to reconcile? Maybe this breakup was a good thing for me to refocus and to actually look at that relationship objectively. So the main part of this, though, is that how long should you wait around or should you start dating? Now, I think for most people, and this is very generic, this advice, and it's different for everybody. It depends where you are in the breakup. It depends why you broke up. It depends if you're the dumper or the dumpy. There's many variables. But I think a good rule of thumb for most people is to give it at least six months. A minimum of six months, either to entertain the possibility of a reconciliation or to entertain the possibility of dating again. Now, for most people, six months isn't isn't enough to be healed or to even be in the position to reconcile. I know for me, certainly, it was a good 18 months before I even started to feel even 50% normal again. And I did date within that time and I wasn't ready. It was just a, it was a complete clusterfuck and yeah, it wasn't a good idea. So if dating is not an option and your ex isn't reaching out to you, you can't sit there. You can't wait for a new person to come into your life and you can't wait for your ex to come back. So what can you do in the meantime to help facilitate one of these options? And that's to focus on you. That's to get you back. That's to level up and to focus, okay, what opportunity did this breakup provide me? How can how can I use this to my advantage? Now, you've been given the gift of time. You've been given the gift of freedom. You can really look inward. Now, a lot of people will say to me, Nick, oh, how could they? I don't understand their actions. I wouldn't do this. Me, 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 me. Okay, I get it. I've been there and I've done it because what ultimately happens when we do get dumped, we become highly narcissistic. I'm not saying you're a narcissist. I'm saying just our natural narcissistic traits come out. Everyone has a narcissistic trait inside them somewhere and it comes out as a natural defense mechanism. And we start blaming every man and woman and their dog about how you feel. But maybe flip it on its head, turn it inward and take extreme responsibility for the situation. Okay, wasn't your fault, but nonetheless, it is your responsibility. And that's a concept from the book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, written by Mark Manson. I've mentioned the book a million times, and I highly recommend that you check out The Subtle Art of Not Giving a, Giving a Fuck, because even though that's not a breakup book, there are so many things in there that you can apply to a breakup. There are so many things in there that you can just say, wow, okay, I never thought about things that way before. So no matter what happened to you, own it. Take responsibility and say, right, okay, I will dig myself out. I will be my own rescuer. I will participate in my own rescue. 
And whatever happens between the two options, should I wait for my ex or should I start dating again, doesn't really matter because either way, you're on the journey of self-love, healing and getting you back. So if your ex does come back after that six months or 12 months or whatever it might be, if they do come back, you will be in a far better position to say, right, okay, I've got some new boundaries. I've got some new healthier behaviors and I'm not going to tolerate that from you anymore because in most cases, guys, look, your ex brought shit to the table as well. They got things wrong as well. Okay, let, let's just assume for a second that you really fucked up. Maybe you cheated. Maybe you was abusive. Maybe you was possessive, jealous or whatever. But I'm willing to bet that your ex brought their bullshit to the table as well. So let's assume that you really messed up, but you've gone away. You've repaired it all. You fixed it all. And now you're saying to your ex, hey, look, I've spent 12 months doing the therapy, doing the coaching. I've been speaking to Nick from The Love Fix, who's, who's a fucking legend, you know, cheeky, narcissistic plug there. Um, and I've leveled up. I've, I've done the work. What have you been doing for the last 12 months? Are you still the same person? Because there are some things that you did that I didn't like. I didn't like, I don't know, for example, you was always late or you would never tell me when you was coming only or, you know, you was hanging out with friends of the opposite, se or opposite sex and you didn't tell me. Now, guys, there's nothing wrong with hanging out with people from the opposite sex, and, but there are boundaries to that. And I think one boundary would be, hey, look, I'm, this is my friend from, from school. I'm just having lunch with her. I'm just having lunch with him. I'll be at this restaurant. I'll be about three hours and I'll be home. Maybe that was a boundary violation for you. Maybe they didn't listen to you. Maybe they listened to respond and always try to win the argument. Have they worked on that bullshit? So, you working on you, you understanding you, answers the question, should I wait or should I start dating? And I think right now, especially within the first six months, the answer is neither of those. The answer is, is that I'm going to spend some time with me. I'm going to learn how to understand me because if I understand me, I will attract better people to me. I will know what I want. I will know what I want from a relationship. I will know how to communicate with a future partner or my partner that wants to reconcile. So it's all about the self. Try and find solitude in your mind to silence it so you can be with yourself. And it is a lonely path sometimes. But if you can embrace the loneliness and you, if you can function in that in-between that in -between space, that space in between breaking up and dating someone new, that magical, wonderful place that I, I like to call single life and, and the path of self-discovery. If you break, embrace that, then when you do reconcile or if you do get a new partner or you will get a new partner, it's not if, you will, if you do the work on yourself, then you've been used to being lonely and they're just in an enhancement to your happiness. They're not making up your old happiness because you've learned to function in the in-between spaces. And if you can do that, guys, you will emerge a new person. This force of good and healthy boundaries and, and secure attachment. And life will change for you. You will get better relationships. You will find much better people. People that know how to communicate healthily, directly, holding healthy boundaries. Having those vulnerable discussions without getting butter. And that, my friends, when you find that and when it just clicks and it just works, it's so much better and it's so much nicer. And you're not worrying about where your partner is because you've just got that trust in them. You've got that love for each other. And they're just like, hey, look, I'm, on a, I'm going on a trip with some friends. Okay my, okay, my darling, have a great time. I'll see you when you get back. And you can be the same. Hey, I'm going on a trip with my friends. I'm having a guy's weekend. This is where we're going. Just it's going to be a little bit chill. Okay, my darling, have a great time. I'll see you when I get back, when you get back. That's what healthy looks like. And it gives you a chance to miss each other. And then you can't wait to get, and you, even though you've had a good time, you can't wait to get home and see each other. That's what healthy looks like. Love someone in a way that makes them feel free. Love yourself in a way that makes you feel free. And I promise you, 
things will change for the better for you. So don't wait around for your ex and try not to date anyone within the first six months because you might not be emotionally available. And if you're not emotionally available, if you're still thinking about your ex, if you're just going on dates to soothe the pain of your ex, it will fail. And that is a rebound. And it will not work. And if it does work, okay, sometimes they do. But if you're outsourcing love and validation, it's because you don't know how to love and validate yourself. And that never ends well. So really take this time to function in the in-between spaces between your last relationship and your future relationship. That in-between space is the relationship with yourself. And when you get with someone new or you do reconcile, you must maintain a sense of self. You must maintain the relationship with you always. That's all I've got for today. If you like the video, hit like and hit subscribe. It will really help the channel out. And once again, check out the links in the description for the coaching services on my Facebook group. And I'd love to see you there or I'd love to work with you. I'll see you on the other side.